Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. On this channel we post writing tips, unboxings, book hauls, book reviews and the occasional vlog. It is October, which means it is spooky month. It is awesome, which I love so much. So I thought it would be fun to not only discuss the top nine tropes that I love, but to discuss the top 10 tropes I absolutely hate. If you do these tropes, likelihood is I do not want to read it. I don't want to watch it. I'm going to be sick of it. Tropes and cliches are always different from individual to individual. So some of these you might actually love. I just sadly don't. Before we get into those, don't forget if you like what you see to subscribe to this channel. Your continued support means a lot. Thank you guys so much. All right, let's get started. My hated trope number one. It was all a dream. This is such a cop out. I know that's harsh. It makes it not scary anymore. It might have been scary at the time. Now you're like, oh, it was a dream. Well, that was pointless. What was the point of watching it? Nothing has changed in the world. The person was just asleep. This would be different if it was someone having dreams that came true or anything psychological thriller based, but it was all just a dream. No. Number two, have sex and die. Why is it that the virgin always lives and the two people who have sex in any horror movie are obviously going to die? There's been so many comedy horror movies that take the piss out of this. Just because you have sex does not mean you should die. You gotta get over this virgin and sex thing, come on. Number three, now if you've watched my nine tropes that I like, this is in there. But you also know I discussed that if it's done wrong, it's very bad. And that is run and fall. If done well, it is in my top tropes that I love. But if you do it badly, oh, that go downhill very quick. Number four, the death hierarchy. Stop it. Just stop it. The black person does not always need to die. The couple having sex do not always need to die. Just stop it. The cheerleader doesn't always have to die. The jockey doesn't always have to die. You literally give us this hierarchy and you literally can just tick off who's gonna die and in what order. Stop it. Number five, no mobile signal. Now, there are places on the planet where you will not have a mobile signal, but there'd be a lot of places you are going to have signal, especially in the modern age. There is internet and Wi-Fi all over the place. So why is it as soon as your people end up in a horror story that they have no signal? You could make it so they all leave their phones behind because they want to have a technology break. That's quite believable. Or that they do phone the police and the police don't answer because they're roadblocked. They've actually, you know, aren't taking it seriously or many, many different reasons. But there's probably going to be signal. Number six, split up because that's a great idea. This goes back to the whole thing in my top nine favorite tropes of characters who do everything right. When your characters decide to split up, you've basically just signed on, someone's gonna die now. It's just, why would you do this? It's quite refreshing sometimes when they split up and someone doesn't die. But then you also kind of feel a little bit disappointed in a weird way. Just, you wouldn't split up. That would be idiotic and stupid. If it's very, very scary, and somebody might be trying to kill you all, you're gonna to stick together. And if you don't, what are you thinking? Number seven, mental health or disability used as horror. You guys know what I mean. Horror movies for years have horrified and scared people with someone with a physical or mental disability or someone with mental health difficulties. This is very highly problematic. It teaches people to be scared of people with disabilities. You should not be scared of these people. There is nothing wrong with these people. But horror movies have tried to make us scared of them and this is just not right. And we know it's been done in the past, but if you're writing a new horror story, don't do this, all right? Just, just don't do it. Number eight, using cultures as horror. Now you know, this is mainly going to talk about the Native American burial ground. What is it with horror movies and Native American burial grounds? It's not historically accurate and it's just... Why? Apart from zombies, no one's done it on an English Victorian graveyard. I mean, England is full of graveyards. We've got dead people all over the place. No one's using that. So why are we using Native American? Why? Again, like the disability, like the death hierarchy, 
like the disability and mental health. The Native American burial ground is just problematic. Stop using people's cultures like horror. Stop it. Number nine, no danger in the daylight. This just makes it, you know, easier for your characters. They can move around freely and safely in the day. If you're able to move around safely and freely in the day, don't you think you'd leave? You can get hours and, I mean, you can get a long way away. And then if you keep driving for the night time as well, then that person ain't gonna catch, you know, what if it's chasing you ain't gonna catch up. You can also go to town and talk to people. You can go and get help. Why would it only happen to you in the dark? I know that the nighttime can make things seem more spooky. We naturally scared of dark places because we can't see as well. It's why humans sleep at night time because we are more vulnerable. So you'd go into a cave and go to sleep because you can't do anything in the night. But in the modern world, you kind of can and there's lights everywhere. But daylight shouldn't always mean safety. And finally, number 10, hysterical women. By this I mean, why is it that's always the woman who goes hysterical? The idea of hysterical in the old medical notes is basically a woman being dramatic. That's stupid. If you're gonna have people go hysterical, slash, you know, obviously have a breakdown, I mean, let's call it what it is, it's not hysteria. It's someone having a panic attack. It's someone being anxious. It's someone literally not knowing what to do. And it's not just women who are gonna go into this. Men are gonna panic as well. So let's just stop it with the hysterical woman. If you're gonna have someone have a panic attack, have them have an actual panic attack, but it doesn't always have to be the woman. You can have everyone. Everyone can have a panic attack at the same time. How about that? We'll all do it together. And that's it for my 10 most hated horror tropes. If you guys have these in your books, I'm gonna call them a cliche and I'm not gonna like them. What do you guys think? Do you agree with these? Are there some that you like, some that you also really hate? Comment down below and let me know. But I mean, some of these guys are really just, you must avoid them. Some are choices, some just don't go near them, please. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If there seasons I upload, click that little bell down below. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr. I post general bookish pictures as well as my writing tips and unboxings on there. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye.